Guys, if you want to see my show on YouTube and Facebook and see how it looks like from the screen, instead of seeing this green halo, you can go to YouTube or Facebook, Steve the Kidney Nurse. Fuel to the fire, ain't nobody can stop it. Trouble in my city, but you know I'm across it. Got a 40 on my hip, and I'm liable to spark it. Throw down these hits, my right. hip gets indivisible. I aim you duck, I squeeze, now you invisible. I'm not afraid of getting physical. All these different chemicals are fucking up my visuals. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Yo, we notorious, we ain't no runners. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Yo, we some warriors. What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? Peace and blessings, D. Hope everyone had a nice Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to the ladies. Put my sweat, put on my pee, put on my mat, put on my team, take out every motherfucker in between. Know what I mean? Better myself, better my aim, better my breath. Alright guys, here we go. Stick around after the show. After party. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Good evening and happy Valentine's Day to the ladies. And welcome to another broadcast of Steve the Kidney Nurse. I am your host, Steve Belcher. What's going on, everyone? How's everyone doing? Hope everyone had a great Tuesday here in Washington, D.C. Do you know it actually got up to 60 degrees? And I had an opportunity to take advantage of that weather. And I hope you guys did, too. I went on a nice walk, had the TikTok crew with me. We was walking like they was walking on the side of me. They saw what I saw as I was walking it nice flowing creek with the rocks the sound of the water so hope everyone is doing great this evening tonight i just this topic came to me early this morning i was trying to decide if i should go on tonight and talk about something and for some reason a dialysis clinic just kind of popped out of nowhere, okay? And I said, let me think of something because people always see me in front of a dialysis clinic, maybe pointing at the dialysis clinic, maybe posing in front of it. And so for some people who are not familiar with kidney dialysis, okay, kidney disease or kidney dialysis, the treatment for kidney failure, they may not know what's in these buildings. They may see them all in the neighborhood like DeVita, Fresinas, you know, may not know how to you know, say the word Fresinas, or they may see other dialysis clinics or companies. It's like, what? What is that? Like, I've never been in one of them. You may even see people walking out or the Metro Access bus or the city or the state bus, whatever bus parked out front, you driving down the street, you may be a passenger, and you just could be happen to look out the window, ride by, see a sign that says Davina, and you may see people coming out with bags and stuff like that, or... You may be a person that sold plasma. You know what I'm saying? You may had to one day maybe go sell plasma. They got a lot of clinics right next to blood plasma places. May need to get an extra few dollars. There's nothing wrong with that. But you may have been going in the plasma place while you going in one door. Somebody going in the other door, going in the dialysis. You're like, I wonder what that what, what that is. Or you could be going into the family dollar. And it's a DeVita right next door. And you'd be like, I wonder what is the DeVita. I always see this. Well, tonight, I'm going to tell you what a DeVita is. What a Fresenius is. A U.S. Reno or a, a kidney care partners or community dialysis center. 
These are all facilities that treat, again, patients with kidney failure. The normal treatment is three days a week, anywhere from three to five hours, depending on the orders that the doctor writes for the patients. It could be five hours. The patient could be a large person, maybe 240 or 50, 60 pounds. And so what I want to talk about tonight is pretty much the inception of these facilities. Now, I'm not in the meeting rooms when they come up to say, we're going to put a clinic over here. But pretty much they use, because you got to use this, demographics, city demographics. And in these demographics, they're looking at the heart disease rate, diabetes, chronic illnesses, heart attacks, the crime, all the sickness in this area. And you find a location that is pretty much accessible on the main bus line, like in Baltimore. There's a DeVita on North Avenue and Greenmount. Now, if you're from Baltimore, you know where North Avenue and Greenmount is. That's a major thoroughfare. Buses come north and south, east and west on Greenmount, north and south on North Avenue. Right on the corner across from the Distavita is a cemetery. Large cemetery directly across the street. The building that this clinic is in used to be a Rite Aid. Now, you find the property, you bring people on board for us, the construction, to turn this building into a dialysis facility. You got to get your plumbing. You got to put the water system in, the plumbing, the drainage, patient lobby, secretary's office, the clinic floor, okay? The treatment floor, the dietitian's office, the social worker, the facility manager, the bioman office, the water treatment room, the break room, and whatever else offices they're going to put in here. Then once they get that established, now you're going to find the technicians that come to work there. You hire your nurses. But even before they can open up, they putting all the books together. The logs, the, 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 the policies and procedures. They getting ready for the inspection. Once they get the the unit fixed up, get the machines in there. Because when they get the machines in there, they got to draw water samples. And I think it's for like a month to make sure there's nothing growing in the water and the treatment system is, is doing its job. And if you're on YouTube, sorry, TikTok, you can't see this picture. But this is the water treatment room um, right here. 
Th th this is the water's treatment room. If you was on YouTube and Facebook, you can see the picture. But they create this and they got to put this equipment in. Make sure that's running before any patients step foot in there. Then the facility got to be inspected. Make sure the logs, the, the policies, everything is these. Then they may run the, uh, one patient while the you know, state did for the inspection. Now they pass inspection, they're ready to open the doors to the public. And you could be a patient going to another unit. And if you're watching this, this may happen to you, especially if you've been on dialysis for a period of time. You you have one unit, you don't like it. Oh, I can't stand this unit. Man, they crazy here. Shit, I, I got to go somewhere else. They don't know what they're doing here. You know what I'm talking about? And next thing you know, you hear about this new unit opening up right down the street how convenient yes this is a competition this is a competition they come in to take patients away and get new patients your doctor may they may ask your doctor to have to, to um Come on board for privileges. You got kidney doctors go to different units. But if your doctor is not on board there, meaning have privileges at that facility, whatever doctor is there, meaning the medical director, that's where you're going to fall under if you transfer. But a lot of places, they, like, they see the new facility open up. I want to go there. They got heated chairs. Oh, the chairs vibrate. That unit may have something that the other facility don't. Oh, they got an ice machine. And then when you get there, it may be a little better. But in the end, they're all the same. You may even see the staff. You, you switch units. Oh, then you used to work at so-and-so? Yeah, I remember you. How many people see done that? You transfer to another unit, and you see a technician working there that worked at your old clinic. They're like, what are you doing over here? Oh, I come over and work over here from time to time. That shows you how short the staffing is. You got somebody working for Fresenius on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, they over at DeVita. How do I know? Because I've done it. I mean, it, I mean, people are doing it. And that's why you may have some staff that work six days a week. I don't do that anymore. But my God, the end of the month, I got a schedule like that seven days in a row. With only Sunday off. I don't have to work that way, that way. But I'm not going to lie, the money is good. But it's more than the money in this job. But we got to live. And unfortunately, technicians don't get paid what they should. Now, this show is not about talking about what should happen, technician? I'm giving you an oversight of a lot of stuff that you may see in dialysis and not understand 
why you got this shortage when you got the CEO making $70 million. And then when it's time for you to get a valuation, they don't even want to give you 1% increase. Come on. But anyway, when these facilities that you see, these dialysis clinics, once they open the door, now patients, they're accepting patients. And so let me introduce you to the people that work in the facility officially. I mean, you may see them if you just started dialysis. Even if you don't, if you got a family member that goes to an outpatient dialysis clinic and all you do is maybe drive them there and drop them off and they keep going and you don't know anything about that part of their life other than they go to dialysis, you drop them off and pick them up. They may not even tell you what's going on on the inside. So let's look at the anatomy of the staff. So first, when you come in the door, you got the administrative assistant, secretary, unit clerk, whatever you want to dress the name up to be. Okay? That's going to be one of the first people you see walk in the door. And they should greet you. Sometimes they may be there, sometimes they not. Then you have the technicians. The dialysis technicians. Most places the training is about 10 weeks. But you got people there who's been in dialysis 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And you're lucky if you find a place that got veterans like 20, 15, 20 years. And what they do, the technicians, is they initiate and discontinue your dialysis treatment. So what do you say, Steve, what do you mean they initiate and, and discontinue? Well, for people who are on dialysis, they go to outpatient, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for people who don't, when the patient comes in the door, and they walk right into the treatment area, the first thing they should do, and I just talked to a friend tonight. I just talked to a friend tonight that's training in Louisiana at a dialysis unit. She just started. She's like, Steve, Steve, you know, the training is going so-so, it's good. But do you know, when the patients come in the door, they don't even use the sink. I say, what? They don't use the sink? And we're not talking about using the sink to wash hands. Yeah, wash the hands, but we're talking about using the sink to wash your access. Especially if you got a graft or fistula. Before you sit in that chair, if you're watching this and you go to dialysis and you don't do that, you should be doing that for your own safety. Yes, use that micro, that anti-microbial soap that they supply. And you come in before you sit down, you go to that sink, raise your, raise your sleeve up, and use that dial antimicrobial soap and some water and wash your access. Because I can tell you, for a lot of people, once you go sit down, the technician 
All they're going to do is rip the alcohol, and it may be a small pad, or it could be a large one, and they're just going to go up and down. And they didn't really clean the access. As I mentioned before in the access video, when they're cleaning your access, they're supposed to go in a circular motion from inner to outer, wiping the germs away from the access. Not just go up, down, and that's it, and, put the, and then put the tape over your arm. So you go, you wash your access, you dry it off, then you go to your chair. This one, if you was on TikTok, I mean, if you was on YouTube and Facebook, you can see the chair. But you go and you sit down at this chair, machine right next to you. And before you sit down, they should be taking, some places do it, some don't, a standing blood pressure and a sitting blood pressure. Recording your pulse and your temperature. Once they do all that and then clean your arm and put the needles in. And if you get a blood thinner, like heparin, now as I was telling my friend, they supposed to be putting it in the venous line of the needle and wait five minutes so the heparin can circulate in your body. A lot of people don't do that no more. And it's supposed to be done because they're so quick to hurry up and get you started on the machine that they may miss the heparin. And so once they get your treatment started, you're on dialysis. So let's talk about the rest of the players. You got the nursing staff, meaning the charge nurse, somebody like myself. And then you got staff nurse. The staff nurse is, is, is pretty much below the charge nurse. The staff nurse may rotate to be a charge the charge nurse in that role at that time, but in that setting, the charge nurse at that time is the overall supervisor. And pretty much everyone is working under the charge nurse license, even though they got their own license. All right, so your staff nurse, you may see her coming to your machine, doing the assessments, listening to your heart, listening to your lungs, checking your ankles for fluid. And then you may see her come and give you medicine, or if you need antibiotics, hang in the main body. Or if you're the, right now, if you go to dialysis, they may come around and give you the Sensipar or the Calcitriol, the little orange pill. And then you got the charge nurse, who's again the overall supervisor who makes the decisions. And then you may have in that unit a PD nurse or home training nurse. They have nothing to do with the floor, but if that unit is short, when I mean short, meaning the, the nurse, because you cannot open up a dialysis unit, you cannot run patients unless there's a registered nurse, not a licensed practical nurse, a registered nurse has to be in that facility before they can initiate treatment. That's why you have some some patients be like, God dang, uh, we 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 supposed to have been on six o'clock. 
Here it is, 6.15. We still not on. What's going on? And they didn't come out in the lobby and say they got mechanical issues, like issues with the water system. Nine times out of ten, if it's not a technical issue, it's a staff issue. That charge nurse is not there yet. They can't do nothing yet. They can put the needles in, but they better not connect you to that machine with no nurse in the building because the nurse got to go back and check the water for chlorine and chloramine. What if they hook you up, the nurse not there, and for some reason there was a, a, a breakthrough with the carbon system. Next thing you know, person knowing they get sick because it's bleach in the uh, in the water. And that happened at a facility in Glen Burnie, Merlin. Somebody didn't check the the tank. And they didn't check the tank for bleach. It was bleach in the tank. And that water got into the system. And patients died. So the anatomy of a clinic is more than just coming in, getting your weight, getting in the chair, getting your treatment, leaving out. I know that's simple and, and a lot of people that's all they want to do and that's understandable but you got to know how these facilities work so you can make a conscious decision if you may in the future want to change your treatment mode you may not like what's going on you may want to go home and do dialysis you may see somebody like a, a, a Candace Me Vegan on TikTok doing home dialysis. And you're like, oh my God, what? You can do it at home? And you sticking yourself? You're like, I didn't know you can do that. No one told us we can stick ourselves or do it at home. And I'm seeing you do it. No, I want to do this. And then you look around and you ask your unit, hey, I just saw a lady on TikTok with a machine at home and she's sticking herself. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I want to do that. And they say, oh, you can't because we don't have a home dialysis unit. And you're like, what? And then, you, you know, you try to find a unit. And then when you try to find a unit to do this, now you got staff coming to you trying to dissuade you from going home. You know, you're talking to people. I'm thinking about doing home dialysis. And they don't got a home dialysis unit there. So they wouldn't even know the benefits that it, it, it can take, I mean, it can have for you. You talk about home dialysis, next thing you know, you got a technician, you know, you talking to a technician, you know, you know, Betty Joe, I'm thinking about doing home dialysis, maybe better for me. And she may be trying to uh, talk you out of, you know what? They say that's not really a good thing to do because, and you know, easy to get an infection and this and that. And you're like, wait a minute, something don't sound right because I saw a young lady on TikTok doing it, and now you telling me this? What? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the real reason why you trying to dissuade me from going home? Because if you find another unit, if you see another company or place that has home dialysis 
and you may want to go there. Yeah, some place is going to may fast track it. But if you start getting the runaround, let's say that. You try to go home dialysis and you get the runaround, more than likely they don't want you to go because when you leave, the revenue is gone. The revenue. You're not coming back to that facility three days a week so they can charge the insurance. That's not happening. So now I introduce you to the staff nurse, the charge nurse. You know, they say, I got to go ask the charge nurse. Let me go tell the charge nurse. Now you got the dietitian. So the dietitian pretty much supposed to, <laughs> okay, supposed to. But when you got a facility with maybe 100 patients and the dietitian is covering that facility and another facility, you can see where I'm going with this that your personal could fall or slip through the cracks. But the dietitian supposed to do a personal diet sheet tailored to your needs. See, not everybody has the same nutritional assessment status. One person may need more protein than the next. One person may have to take less sodium than the next. One person may have can maybe have more potassium in their diet than someone else. But you won't know unless you see a dietitian and she tell her your personal diet sheet or assessment. They're supposed to be available to you to discuss your diet with you and your family because your family is now included in this equation. Yes. Kidney disease doesn't just impact the person with the issue. It impacts the family. Not just the person with the disease, but the family as a whole. That's why you have to include them in this equation. Now, the dietitian is supposed to offer many helpful suggestions. But if you find that your dietitian at your outpatient renal facility is not doing you any justice, reach out to the renal dietitians or nutritionists that's on TikTok or Facebook. One person I can think of off the top of my dome is Kelsey Reed with CKD Nutrition. Okay, she thinks outside the box. Your diet doesn't have to be draconian or bland. And so the next person on the totem pole is the social worker. And do you know, let me tell you how fortunate kidney patients are here in the United States to have a renal social worker, a renal dietitian. Do you know the brothers and sisters over in Kenya? They don't have a dietitian. They don't have a social worker. They do two days a week, four hours. 
And anything extra far as medicine, like the like the iron or the epigen, comes out of their pocket. <clears throat> so, and speaking of that, this Sunday is the beginning of Kidney Hub East Africa international show. Myself and Moses Kennedy, the ambassador, the kidney ambassador. <clears throat> Excuse me. This Sunday, the 19th, 8 p.m. East African time, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, USA. And that's going to be a great show. You, you want to get a chance to hear firsthand how dialysis is done in Kenya and the lack of education and staff like the dietitian. No dietitian. So if you don't got a dietitian, how are you going to get a personalized diet plan? If you don't even have a dietitian, to do the assessment. You're on your own. So definitely count your blessings. But the social worker, now about the social worker, is usually a, a, a person with a master's degree, just like the dietitian, master's degree. They're licensed, clinical. Now, these social workers, some of them are specially trained in, you know, to work with kidney disease patients. And what they're supposed to do is offer you and your family support and advice and coping with all aspects of your illness and your day-to-day -day life. In many cases, they were, well, this is over in England. Over in the UK, I think the social workers may visit them at their house. You're not going to have that here in the United States. Ain't no social worker going to come to your house if you don't show up for dialysis to see what's going on. At the least, they may call. But a lot of times I hear patients, oh, my social worker ain't doing nothing for me. I gave her the slip to put in so I could do this or get this, and I haven't heard back from her. She wasn't able to do this. That, that's how it mostly goes. They overwhelmed too. They might be taking care of 100 patients at one unit. Now they got to cover another unit. All day just writing notes. And they may not even talk to you. Hey, how you doing? Anything going on? Okay. Patient stable, mission. You know, they could turn a two-minute or one minute discussion with you into a note just pulling it putting in fillers patient seemed happy today walked past stopped I talked to patient patient didn't have much to say however I asked the patient how they were doing da 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 and that's it not really getting into the meat and bones of how you really feeling. Especially if you just started dialysis. They don't think a lot of people could be scared of this. Now I want to read something. I want to take a, 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 a small pause 
in the anatomy of a dialysis unit and read some things that may help you if you just started dialysis or you got hit with stage two, three, or four, or five kidney disease. I want to read some information to you from one of my um, um, books where I get my information. Okay. And I hope if you hear in this, these paragraphs or sentences that I read, that you can apply to your life. If, especially if you're dealing with a chronic illness. So, here's the first one. There is an old saying that the fear of something is often worse than the reality, and this is frequently the case with renal failure. Okay, again, there's an old saying that the fear of something is often worse than the reality, and this is frequently the case with renal failure. The second one, all of us have our life planned out in our minds. We walk around. We plan our lives. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to get married. Oh, I want to have a child. Oh, I want to move some here. I want to do this. All of us have our life planned out in our heads. There are the immediate things which we know we will be doing in the next few hours, days, or weeks. There are the things we plan to do over the next few months the family wedding, the annual will do once we have the time. Next one, when something as life-threatening such as renal failure comes along to rock our boat, it is natural that we feel anxious, afraid, and worried over what the future holds for us. All of a sudden, there's a big question mark over the life we have planned and an uncertainty over what will replace it. Then they say, they're going to say, there is much research to show that no matter what we lose, be it our keys, someone close to us, part of our body or body function, we as humans respond in the same way. Initially, when the loss is discovered, there's a sense of numbness, which may last for a few seconds, hours, or even days, and then we often go through a period of denial. You, you know the feeling. Maybe if I really stick to the diet, my kidneys may get better. Eventually, the reality sinks in. However, this is for real. This is happening to me. Some of us continue to denial, go about life as if nothing has changed. Some people panic, seek reassurance that all will be well. And many just take such, just take each day as it comes and decide to worry about it when the mall comes. Sometimes you can't act in that manner, especially when you're dealing with a chronic illness. 
some people become sad, some angry, and a few of us become very controlled and decide to keep their feelings to themselves or ourselves. Once again, this is fine. It's all a part of the adjustment process of dealing with the chronic illness. But remember, it's not only you. The patient who feels the effects of approaching renal failure all the uncertainties, worries, and anxieties. This can be inspected. And that was the reason why I wrote this book. That was the reason why I wrote this book. So when people who get diagnosed with kidney failure got to step through those doors, they already know what to expect. And hopefully this book, once they read it before they go through those doors, it, it, it's, hopefully it can reduce the uncertainties, the worries, and the anxieties. These are also felt by your family member, people close to you. They're going to feel the same way because they don't know about dialysis. It's new to them too, especially if you have someone that really loves you, especially kids. They come in the clinic and they see, they see this big gigantic machine pumping your blood out of your body and going back in. You don't know how that's going to impact your children or your your family members, but they got to know because they also worry about you and how this will affect the future. So when this happens, change is around the corner for everybody. If you just get diagnosed and, and, and it look like you may have to start dialysis, that change is going to be for everyone. So if you just started, been hit with the diagnosis, they say what you are feeling right now is a natural reaction to what you have been going through for the past weeks, months, or maybe years. There is much uncertainty around, uncertainty that we uh, somehow have to learn to live with. Some patients feel they have lost control of their lives and that suddenly someone else is pulling the strings. Just like at the dialysis unit. You go in there, oh, you can't drink this, you can't do this. And now you gotta sit down and somebody gotta put needles in your arm. You got to depend on the machine. The doctor say you can't do this. You can't eat that. Of course you're going to feel like someone else is the puppet master. So if you can, if you can, try not to keep things to yourself. Even if you got to go into one of the kidney groups on Facebook or like on TikTok. If you see like the, the, the broadcast now and if there's multiple people in the broadcast in the feed that's dealing with the same condition you're dealing with and you going through something, that, that's the time to get it out. All right, that's the time to, as we say, 
Let somebody use somebody else as a sounding board. Because you'll feel a lot better once you release or dump or whatever you need to do, talk about maybe something that happened, you're going through with dialysis. And it could be other people could experience that same thing, but you may not know because no one know that you went through the situation. Oh, you know, God damn it. I went to dialysis today and they ended up putting the needle in and, and, and my arm just got swollen and they said I couldn't do dialysis. I ain't never seen that happen before. And you go to the to the to the uh, Facebook group or what you call it, uh, TikTok, and you say this, and they're like, "Yeah, girl," or "Yeah, bro," that happened to me. That happened to me when I first started. Did they tell you to put ice on it? No, they just told me to come back. On the, tomorrow or the next or or right my regular day, they said I didn't have much fluid on. They didn't tell me about the ice and the heating pad. So try not to keep things to yourself. A problem shared is a problem halved. You just cut it in half because you let somebody else know about it. Often with a little bit of information, many things suddenly fall into place. And we begin to see that little bit of sunlight. This may have happened to you, started dialysis, uh, things, you know, maybe home dialysis didn't start off well, or PD, or even in center, may have little hiccups. But now, things, you can see light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, okay, I got it now. Oh, like Candace. I hate to use, keep using her, but I'm so proud of this young lady who came on my podcast and, and shared her story. And took suggestions and did her research before even starting dialysis to know what treatment option she wanted to do when the time was ready for her to start dialysis. She understood the assignment of what she needed to do to make that happen at home. So, you know, again, Often with a little bit of information, many things suddenly fall into place. And then you begin to see that little bit of sunlight. And then have you heard the saying, people dialyze to live not live to dialyze. Let me repeat that. I've heard people say, I dialyze to live. I don't live to dialyze. You take your life back. All right. So now let's get we we passed the dietitian, the social worker. Now you got the administrator or the clinic manager. This person is just like just look, just equate this with a fast food restaurant. That's how the setup is. You got your line workers, which are the technicians, the people who do the certain food or whatever. 
Then you got your manager, the clinic manager who runs the clinic. Make sure every the bills are getting paid. The clinic is meeting productivity. The one makes the decisions on what to order and what not to order. And so now you have this person and if you got any complaints, that's normally a person you see. The facility administrator. If you got any issues, normally that person comes out if the charge nurse can't take care of it. Then you got the biomedical guy, the person who fixed the machines. You hardly never see that person because he may be covering other units. You may see one guy come out on the floor and, and do something with the machine. That could be him or her because now they got female biomed techs. And they repair the machines, do the water cultures, meaning they take cultures from the RO water and the machines to make sure that there's no bacteria growing in the water because we use a lot of water in dialysis a lot of water and that sets up for possible pyrogen these are bacteria in the water so that's why you come in well, you don't come in and see this, but every week the machines supposed to be disinfected with bleach. They may do it in the morning before you get on or at the end of the day. They don't like to do it at the end of the day because it may got to stay later. But we bleach the machines once a week. And then they bleach the whole system, the whole water system. As we call it, the loop. The man takes care of all the water treatment system parts or whatever breaks down with the reverse osmosis machine or the carbon tanks or the softener. Anything that has to do with biomedical. That's what the biomed tech take care of. And then last but not least, you have your medical director who may be your doctor who sets the policies and, well, he doesn't set the policy, but he signs off and the clinic is working under his license. Because you cannot run a dialysis clinic without a medical director. He makes the final call. He makes the final call. And so I lost a lot of my uh, Facebook audience and, and YouTube, but I had some pictures to show. But I guess um, these same pictures, I'll roll over to TikTok and put them up on the screen so you guys can see the different pictures I have. <clears throat> but, but yeah, this is the anatomy of a kidney dialysis clinic. So I want to sign off on uh, Facebook and YouTube. I'd like to thank everyone who did watch. I'm down to one person now, but that's okay. And that one person, if you got TikTok, I advise you to go over there. Oh, I got two people that just came back. But um, let me put this picture up right quick. Some of the pictures of the dialysis unit. We got this one right here where you have the machines. 
Okay, let me see if I can show you guys from. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me take out the green screen. All right, so so y'all can see. So you have clinics. This is like a standard unit right here, pretty much. You got the chairs, you got the machines. Then here they look like they got TVs on the wall. Okay. Then you got the machine right here. This bit well, let me take off this banner. So this right here, you got the jugs at the bottom, the filter, the hoses to the machine, the waste comes out of here and goes down the drain in the back of the wall, fluid comes through this hose, all right, then you have the water treatment room. These are carbon tanks right here. This is the water softener. Then you got the RO over to the left, which stands for reverse osmosis. This machine right here makes pure water. Okay. Now, most units you come into, this is what you see. You got the dialysis chair that the patient sits in. All right, you see this rag? We clean the chair with the bleach white right here. Uh, some chairs got a control right here where um, it heats up the chair or vibrates it. You got the machine. You can see as they get ready to set up right here. You got the filter on the lines. And this right here is the keyboard on the machine where you enter information in. You got the priming bucket right there. And then you got the clinic where you can see people right here getting their treatment, watching TV, right? It's kind of congested. You got the linen basket right here. And you got the cart where they put their supplies on. And see, this is what I'm talking about right here. You see where I'm going with this mouse? Like this cart, like sometimes the technicians, you see how she got her gloves on right here? You see this? See, I don't know this picture, but she can be, these gloves can be dirty, and she could have went over here and grabbed something clean with her dirty gloves. You see what I'm saying? Then you got the trash can right there. And then you got the biohazards where you put the dirty lines in right there. And the filter after treatment. But you see how congested the clinic is? So this is some of the things you got to think about when if you want to do, like if you decide to do outpatient treatment if you get diagnosed it behoove you to go to the unit first to to take a look at the unit and you know, walk through to see if this is the unit for you you don't have to go to the one that the doctor says go to this one no you have a choice you may not want to go to something congested like that You see how close the machine these this is to the other patient. These machines, you see how close? And there's nothing wrong with that. But how if you got a doctor that comes and talks to you in the chair, if he's talking loud, this other patient can hear your information. So where does the HIPAA comes in? Not unless that person has on headphones. You know, they got TVs. But this is how, if you haven't seen the inside of a clinic, this is pretty much how it looks like. Yes, I will. 
I will. I'll do it Thursday. I'll do that Thursday. The benefits of home, even though I did it before, I'll, I'll do it again. Uh, yeah, because there are benefits to home dialysis, and I'm, you know, I, we know that not everybody is suitable for home dialysis or can do it at home. We understand that, but those who can, um, the benefits are enormous. They, they, they are enormous, the benefits of doing home dialysis. Um, yeah. It's, it, so, um, so, uh-oh, let me, um, there we go. So, yeah, guys, so let me sign off of, of Facebook and YouTube. Thank you guys for watching on Facebook and YouTube. Appreciate you. Uh, come back this Thursday as I talk about the benefits, the advantages and disadvantages of doing home dialysis. Thanks to the person on TikTok who requested it, even though they're not a subscriber. Uh, I want to do the show because that's true. Home dialysis has many benefits. And you just can't do a sh I'm sorry. Uh, you couldn't hear me. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, what I said on, because uh, my mic was off, I'm going to do a show this Thursday at 8 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok on the benefits and advantages and disadvantages of home dialysis. Even though I talked about this subject before, you can never stop talking about these these subjects. You may say, hey, Steve, I, I heard you before. I was here. But what about the person who wasn't? People getting diagnosed every day. People, like, I think it's like 304 people are diagnosed each day. It's either that or added to the kidney waiting list. But people are being diagnosed every day. So you got to keep this information circulating. And uh, you got a lot of nurses that not, that's not doing that. But anyway, thank you guys on Facebook and TikTok. I mean, I'm sorry, Facebook and YouTube about to shut it down. Want to be on TikTok for maybe about 10 minutes and uh, call it a night. I got to be at work tomorrow. Or it's going to be long. So thank you guys on Facebook and YouTube. I really appreciate it. Let's see, I got a comment. Tracy Whitaker says, I was told that I would be a good candidate for home dialysis. Um, yeah, you probably would. I can't see. You, but yes, if they told you that, please come to the show this Thursday, Tracy. And thank you for coming on. It's the first time. I seen your name, but I may have seen it, just didn't remember. But thank you so much for commenting and come back Thursday at eight o'clock. And I want to talk about home dialysis and the benefits. And hopefully everything I say, maybe from that you can make a conscious decision. A conscious decision on is this right for you? or not because there's a lot of dynamics you got to think about doing home dialysis and when we talk about doing home dialysis we're not talking see a lot of people get it confused we're not talking about CAPD getting the tube in we're talking about home hemo especially if that's what you're doing because they're doing home hemo it's not just inside your belly so this may be the right choice, for you, especially if you like to go out. Say if you like to go out. Again, that's where it is, Tracy. That's where this line that I read earlier, I don't know if you heard it. Like the aim, if you're in this predicament, is for you to be able to lead a fairly normal life, whatever we consider what normal is. We don't know what normal is, but maybe the life 
you will leave living before dialysis to try to get back to that life as best as you can. Because some people see dialysis as a nuisance. Like, God damn, man. Hey, y'all go again. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Hey, it's a nuisance. I want to, shit. I, if I didn't do, do dialysis, I could be doing this. I could go here. So you got people say they they dialyze to live. Not live to dialyze. So come back on Thursday. I know you said you'd be there. Thank you. Um and we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about this. Home dialysis, the benefits. I know I've talked about it before, but this time I may say some things that somebody may connect on and say, oh, yeah, okay, let me try home dialysis. I seen a young lady on TikTok. She's doing home dialysis. Maybe it can apply to me. If she can do it, I can do it. And I'm younger than her. You may be in that position. So with that being said, this Thursday, 8 o'clock, we're going to talk about the, the disadvantages and advantages of home dialysis and what it means to you. And, and if, if you can, you know, if you think you can do it and they got a home, you, home training unit at your facility, take advantage of it. Because that way now you control. It ain't no... Oh, you come in dialysis early. We ain't got a chair ready yet. Shit. You want to go out. It may be Valentine's Day evening. You got your boo waiting for you. It could be the night. You could be in treatment right now, getting ready to get off. And you can't make the plans because you had dialysis. So you got to be at home. But now that you're doing dialysis at home, we can go do what we want to do, boo. Come on back. I do my treatment at night. And after I finish treatment, you may have the energy, whether you a male or female. And then you're ready to spoon. <laughs> Getting to be in a spoon. So, look, we're opposed to you go to outpatient, you're running three hours of rigorous treatment, three and a half hours, you feel like crap. You don't want to do nothing. You don't even want to spoon. You just want to go lay somewhere and feel better. So, we want to talk about the benefits, the advantages and disadvantages of home dialysis. What your lifestyle is, if, if, if home dialysis is right for you. Because if you're the type of person that like the jet set, you got some paper and, and, and you, you know, some racks, as they call them now, and you, you know, you like to travel, go to Vegas, go to California, you know, maybe jet set down to Miami. You do home dialysis, and if you got that racks, you can take your machine with you, and you can hire me. I'll put your needles in. You know what I'm saying? If you can afford it, I mean, if you got 500 grand, 1,000, you living on someone's trust, or whatever, and you fall dialysis, and you need a private nurse, you can always reach out to me. You know, especially if you pay him more than my job, <laughs> you know. But no, all jokes aside, if you're the type that travel or social, you like to be social or like to just do things and you know if you go to dialysis, it's going to take time away from what you normally like to do. 
then home dialysis would be the perfect situation for you. Because you can do dialysis whenever you want. If you can't sleep, you do it at night. You can be on, do it, be on, and be on TikTok. Once you get a thousand, you know, thousand people, you can go live. And now you can show people what you're doing. And now you educating a population on kidney disease. That's how we do this. So other people can know and make this known. So, with that being said, I want to end the show. Thank you guys again. 8 o'clock this Thursday, the 16th, Eastern Standard Time, the benefits of home dialysis, the advantages and disadvantages. Is it right for you? With that being said, thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you for your support. God bless you. And stay blessed and encourage. Peace. Around, don't get caught in the mind fit. The fuel to the fire, ain't nobody can stop it. It's a trouble in my city, but you know I'm across it. Got a 40 on my hip, and I'm liable to spark it. Throw down these hits, my click is indivisible. I aim you duck, I squeeze, now you invisible. I'm not afraid of getting physical. All these different chemicals are fogging up my visuals. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Yo, we notorious, we ain't no runners. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Yo, we some warriors, they ain't called gunners. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Put on my strap, put on my beam, put on my map, put on my team, take out every motherfucker in between. Know what I mean? Better myself, better my aim, better my rap, better my name. Killing rappers on my hang, I'm by their chains for the fame. Never thought I would, now I'm running. You don't wanna follow me, I'm up to the front.